Let's dig into the guts of CFD. Part 1. Navier-Stokes Equations Hello everybody, I'm Nick the Naval Architect. So first off, why does this even matter? Why do you need to understand all of the CFD techno mumbo jumbo stuff? Well, to create an analogy, a lot of software vendors would like you to think of CFD as a calculator. Just type in the numbers and get the same answer and you're done. In reality, CFD is much more like an advanced Excel spreadsheet where you as the operator are typing in your own formulas and the CFD software will very happily execute those formulas and it's up to you as the operator to understand what is actually being executed. It's up to you as the operator to actually understand how that it, mathematics is translating into real world numbers. Because all of the CFD machine knows is mathematics. It doesn't actually understand if that mathematics translates into accurate real world predictions. So now abandoning our analogy, CFD, you're not necessarily typing in actual formulas but you are actually controlling the setup. And a lot of the accuracy of that setup has to do with the grid sizing and a lot of the physics settings that you input. You input. That, all of those settings, what is a good value for those settings depends on the physics and on the equations. You determine those settings, which means you need to understand how those settings feed into the physics. So you need to understand the physics and how they're interpreted by the CFD solver. Let's start with the most fundamental of all CFD physics, Navier-Stokes equations. Navier-Stokes equations describe all of the forces and all of the motions that can act on a fluid. They are the equations of motion for a fluid. Now that sounds very big and scary, but I'm actually going to show you the basis of how they get derived and I want you to understand that they're actually based on a pretty simple concept. That simple concept is basically Newton's laws of motion translated into fluid terms. So if we just take a simple six-sided box, uh, this is a six-sided cube of fluid, some tiny little chunk of fluid, and we're going to say what are all the possible forces that can act on the surface of this fluid? Well, we've got direct pressure that can act on all six sides, but then we also have shear stresses that can act on all six sides. Okay. Let's add up all the forces on all six sides. And to avoid making this too complicated, we're going to start by just adding up stresses in the x direction only. So first we have the x faces, that's the minus and positive x face. Those are direct pressures only, so we've got the stress terms, those direct pressures, times the areas of those faces, dy dz. Next, we add in the shear stresses from the y sides. So we've got the minus y and the plus y. Those are shear stresses. So we've got shear yx on the minus side and then shear yx on the plus side. And then multiply that by the area of that face, which is dx dz. Now we have to add up the other area, which is going to be the shear stress again, but this time for the top and bottom faces. And again, multiplied by the area of those faces, which is going to be d dx dy. And you can see by adding up all three of these terms, we now have all six of our faces on this little infinitely small cube of fluid here. If we group some similar terms together here, do a little bit of algebra to clear, clean up our equation and simplify it down a bit, we get this simplified equation. This right here is adding up all of the stresses on our infinitesimal element of fluid in the x direction only. Now we have to add in one extra force. Our infinitesimal fluid, we were just looking at forces on the surface of that fluid. There is one other thing that can act on that fluid, which is body forces. Uh, these are things that not don't act on the surface, but actually act throughout the entire volume of the fluid. These would be things like gravity or magnetism. Okay, we'll add that in. And now from here on out, I'm going to skip a few steps because it's more important for you to understand the essential idea behind Navier-Stokes rather than the full complicated mathematics of it. And the essential idea behind Navier-Stokes is that it is force equals mass times acceleration. So the equation of motion in the x direction is mass times acceleration in the x direction equals force. All right, 
Let's turn that around a little bit. What's our mass? Well, our mass is our density times our three dimensions of our cube, dx, dy, dz. Our acceleration in the x direction, I'm going to start slipping in some calculus terms here. That turns into big du, big dt, which uh, if you've ever taken differential equations, you'll know that the big D is uh, significant. It stands for the full derivative across all the variables, and that's probably bringing back some nightmares of differential equations right now. But understand that basically that means acceleration. And on the right-hand side of that equation, that's the forces. Well, what are our forces? We've got our surfaces, our surface forces, and our body forces. That's the F1x and our F2x. So there they are. Remember we had those before? And if I just take off that shading, you can see there they are. Mm, this equation is starting to look a little complicated, but okay, we remember at the core of it, it's still just mass times acceleration equals force. I'm starting to see some common terms there that we can cancel out on both sides of the equation. And there. Well, that's not looking too bad. That's a fairly simple looking equation, but we're definitely now into the realm of calculus. That's okay. We kind of knew we would have to get there anyways. And at this point, I'm going to skip about five steps, jump ahead to the end, and show you what the full Navier-Stokes looks like. We're going to get rid of those stress terms and make some substitutions to turn them into some of the more fundamental properties of the actual physical fluid, which is viscosity. That's what we really can measure. Once we do those substitutions, we get something that looks like that. Now, I know that looks a lot different from the previous equation. I've also switched to vector notation, which is pretty fancy. So yeah, it looks very different. But this is the Navier-Stokes equations for full fluid motion uh, just in the x-axis direction in vector notation. It looks different, but the core thing you have to remember is this is just mass times acceleration equals force. That's still what we're dealing with here. Add up all the forces, and that's what the acceleration is. That's the fundamental idea behind Navier-Stokes equations. So Navier-Stokes is one of four critical things that we need. Once you get these four pieces of information, you own the fluid. You know everything there is to know about that fluid. First thing is Navier-Stokes equation. If you can solve that equation, you're halfway there. Then you need the equation of continuity. Um, this is a very fancy way of saying a fluid cannot simply cease to exist right in the middle of space. You can't have sudden vacuums and voids in, in the fluid. It can't happen. It can change in density, but it can't just suddenly cease to exist. There might be thermodynamic relationships. So yeah, fluids can expand, they can contract, they can heat up. That's all possible. So that might happen. And the boundary conditions, which is to say things like if your fluid is sitting inside a bowl, that bowl is a boundary. It has a basic mathematical relationship of saying fluid cannot leave the bowl. That, those sorts of things. You get these four pieces of information, you know everything there is to know about that fluid. To summarize up, the main thing that you need to remember from this today is Navier-Stokes equations. You're going to see this written in many different forms. Uh, it gets expanded, it gets simplified. People like to write it in different formats. They have different notations for writing it. But at the core of it, all you really have to remember is that Navier-Stokes equations is force equals mass times acceleration. It's the momentum equation. It's the momentum equation. And that is the basic essence of Navier-Stokes equations. I hope this helps you. Thanks very much. I'm Nick the Naval Architect. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to click that like button and subscribe for more videos. And did you know that we produce more than just videos at DMS? Check out our website to find more articles, free downloads, and other help with ship design. We offer a host of engineering services for budgets large and small. So check us out to see if we can make your next project easier.